Ready Player Will. Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. This is the preliminary character thoughts for both Kadaj and Sephiroth. And Kadaj we knew about for about a week and a half, two weeks now. Sephiroth we've known for a couple days, almost a week now. We're waiting on the Vision card for the Katana class that I'm assuming is coming out with Sephiroth. So I will talk about that more toward the end of this. But for now, we can at least talk through some preliminary character thoughts. Obviously, there's a lot more to do in terms of stress testing and looking at the maps and seeing what the future units are with our one-month roadmap ahead of JP. There's obviously still more to do with me getting to know the, number, the characters better in terms of really memorizing everything about them, but I feel relatively confident enough to at least give a preliminary thought to kind of guide the expectations of what you might attempt to try to pull for or what you're really trying to focus on or or uh, really trying to maybe clear up some misconceptions or just bring my personal flavor to things. And so we're going to start things off with Kadaj. And from a stat overview perspective, you know, stats honestly are very, very good considering all these fourth anniversary units are getting power crap from a stat perspective. They are all getting very good base stats. And, and so these views that look at them compared to all UR units always look very favorably. Uh, most of them are relatively competitive with each other though, but Kadaj really comes in at a strong point with his overall agility stat here. He is a very speedy character, all things considered. He's got very, very good luck and dexterity as well. Those are both part of uh, his build where he's a very accurate unit that we'll see uh, in just a, a minute as well. The attack stat and HP, certainly serviceable and fine. The HP might be a little bit lower than what some of the more recent units have, but he does have some things that can help him in that area. We'll get to soon. From a luck perspective, from an evasion perspective with those luck scaling equips, I wouldn't say he's necessarily any kind of top tier evade unit, but Water certainly has the vision card support for it. Katana doesn't quite yet, but that maybe is something that could come down in the line. I really think his luck is more accuracy oriented than it is for uh, evasion orientation. And from the accuracy perspective, he is exceptionally accurate. He's right there with King Mont as one of the top tier premier accurate units in the game. He's got a bunch of abilities that are plus 30% hit chance. So he is very much like an anti-evade unit. And that's one of my problems with him is that he seems to fit a a character archetype that we don't really need right now. Now, maybe in the future, if there's an evade unit that comes out, he'll, he'll be handy. But that's not normally how Gumi or at least Gotcha does these things. They usually create the problem and sell you the solution. They don't always like sell you the solution ahead of time and then create the problem and and you're screwed if you don't have the solution. But regardless, very good accuracy. And then from the agility perspective, where he ends up falling short is the fact that he does not have a passive ability to amplify that agility. So while he is innately very fast, I think he's at that 85 or 86, which is very good from an innate perspective, doesn't really have any ways to amplify it above that. So he's still relatively in line with where most other units are from that agility perspective. And just some notable abilities here. One of the big key things for Kadaj is his teammate buff here, where there's a ton here that's really supposed to translate to the rest of his abilities, where he gains 30 human killer for four turns he gives himself haste he also gives himself human resistance of 25 percent for four turns he also is able to uh reduce enemy physical damage by 15 percent for themselves for three turns and then he can also reduce their crit rate by 20 and dispels ap restore which is a, a huge thing that we're seeing now with king monk coming in and sephiroth has some too uh if you're using oberon the auspicious in that sephiroth team he also has it so there is an uptick in that self ap restore but as you can see here there's a bunch of things of, of on hit abilities like the human killer like the damage reduction like the crit rate reduction that you those three attributes all apply to the rest of these abilities. So while the rest of these offensive abilities look kind of bare bones compared to average in terms of what characters normally might get for their offensive abilities, you have to consider that you're adding in those three buffs to every single attack as well. And so that begs the question, like how much value is that truly? Uh, one of my problems with this main buff is that A, it doesn't appear to have any attributes on it that prevent it from repeating. One of the big perks of having a buff with a barrier on it is that barriers do not repeat in terms of like AI. And I think Courage is the same. Reraise is not exactly the same, but it's damn near close. And so until I actually like prove this myself, I, I'm, I need to see replays. I think this is a repeatable buff, which is a massive, massive flaw in 2024 in War of the Visions comparatively speaking to where the bar is. Now, the other thing is that a lot of this is very easily dispellable. The human killer is easily dispellable. So isn't the haste. 
So you lose those two things, you lose a major part of his offensive output in terms of turn order uptime and getting that extra modifier uptime. The abilities themselves, they're kind of, they're okay. You know, this is an 80% defense crush only on that ability, though. It's not a lasting defense break, which kind of stinks, unfortunately. 100% hit chance, though. It's certainly nice. Select two. The other one here, it's another select two, and it's a break physical barrier. But, you know, I think he will get outranged by some people that have barrier seal. But overall, you know, select two for 200% mod. It's a relatively bare bones ability, but certainly nice if you add in the other attributes. This third one here, I almost laughed at when I saw it because it's literally nothing other than a 200 mod ability. Um, seems very lackluster in 2024. And this is his limit break at the bottom, which is the dispel courage, the dispel re-raise. That's fine, but, uh, you know, not as suffocating as it was once, where most characters have plenty of re-raise and courage to spell in their regular abilities. You don't need to rely on a limit break for that. That's very uh, Sephiroth of old, if you know what I mean. It's another 30% of chance, and it gives AP restore to himself as well. So, you know, all things considered, I'm actually not in love with the offensive orientation of, of this build, where... Of the water units and the katana units, we don't see that unit crush yet. So in terms of the different select twos, it's not like the synergy that you see with King Mon or even with Tifa potentially where they bring that in peril. So he's really not getting into that damage upside. The rest of the abilities to me are really just kind of bare bones in terms of what they offer for utility. There's really nothing there for survivability. There's really nothing else there for like health regen in terms of survivability. He does not have any like damage absorbs anywhere in the kit. There's no self heal back. There's no sequence ability for a follow up heal. So he kind of like Cloud is one of those units that uh, seems relatively bare bones in, in what they do for uh, survivability considering they don't have any healing potential whatsoever. And that might be okay if there's a curse meta where you can't heal anyway, but uh, that's a kind of a bigger red flag for me considering that's kind of this bare minimum for many units nowadays. And so my general thoughts, my preliminary gate is a B for Kadaj. I'm really not terribly impressed by him. There seems to be a lot of holes and flaws in what he does. He's kind of uh, redundant slash irrelevant for what water needs at the moment. I really see him from like a Katana only angle, particularly if you're happy to pull Sephiroth. So they are kind of like a, a duo bundle, if you know what I mean. And so, yeah, he's, he's heavily buff reliant, which I, I don't think is very good. We're seeing Dispel everywhere at the moment. His 40 slash res pen on his second buff is Dispellable. The 20 all element res that he gives himself sounds great it's easily dispellable the haste is dispellable the human killer and and there's so many units that have that nowadays that i don't think this is a reliable metric to to lean on as a core component of your character he is exceptionally good for anti-evade but again i'm not really sure if that's necessary nowadays so aren't most of these units for what they bring for innate accuracy only d 40 defense pen innately is kind of concerning and he is a 90 cost unit so that's part of the balance conversation of why they may not have gone more than that but right now we're seeing loads of like defense pen down from any Enemies and higher defense values overall and although he has that like defense crush on the select two that crush also can be mitigated by debuff weakening effects so who ends up knowing if it's really all that strong the interesting angle of enemy damage reduction is there though where he does grant that 15 percent physical damage down the 20 percent crit rate down the dispel ap restore which is a form of net damage loss if you can't you know do as many abilities as you normally might i don't think this is all of that strong though and i don't think his innate survivability is all that strong either i've had some people really like bug out at like oh man he's got this like 20 all element res he gives himself 25 human res uh, he's also got 15 all element res innately on a passive and so you see all these things and it sounds really good but i did a quick analysis and i'll do this more in my character view but i looked at him compared to the lucio the luminous who's got almost equal the amount of like element res and, and other kinds of attributes and and lucio is not a steel tank by any means he, he can easily die to a handful of things and so uh it sounds great but i don't think in practice it's all of that great and so i'll pause here but kadaj i am underwhelmed personally i genuinely actually don't think it's a good unit i've jokingly in the howl discord said he is the resol of fourth anniversary it's a unit that probably looks pretty decent from a power creep perspective but will never really go the distance uh as a bold prediction early now for sephiroth who everyone is exceptionally excited for absolutely fantastic villain they've done amazing things with him in this game and amongst like other games as well in terms of reinvigorating the love for him as a character and yeah stat wise he is absolutely top of the charts as well and many of these attributes very happy with where he ends up his hp is tank 
esque in terms of how high the HP gets. The luck is certainly there for the accuracy. The agility and attack is certainly there. There's not enough good things to say. And the evasion, kind of similar to Jume and Maul. You're seeing this trend now where uh, they are on this gradient of evasion. And although it looks pretty, I, I don't think it's actually as evasive as we think it is in practice, just because the power creep of the game has made everyone kind of innately more accurate and more evasive. Uh, the accuracy for him, though, does start off very, very good. He, like King Mon and a couple others, have some accuracy nodes on their board, but he's got no passives to amplify that accuracy. So where he starts off at, he kind of ends at. And so although Sephiroth does have a guaranteed hit, it's his 120 ability, it's very short range. I think it's only three squares away as a, as a range. And the rest of the abilities, there's no like extra hit chance percent. So uh, accuracy-wise, some questions potentially, quite honestly. Now for the agility, uh, very, very fast. He does have a passive uh, for agility of 12% that jettisons him into that top tier of most fast units you could possibly get in the game. Uh, I'm very happy with where he ends up on that. It also gives him jump plus one. So excellent movement capabilities from that perspective. Absolutely a strong point for him. Uh, now we get to the, the notable abilities. There's honestly a lot um, that I, I'm not going to cover here, but certainly should know about. I'm, I'm like done with these buffs, guys. I really am. Like this is, I don't even know how you, this is a, an immense teammate buff that's 25 AoE res, and it stays on you if you have re-raise or AP restore. The problem with these buffs, though, it's a little misleading in how it's worded. It's even worded like this in-game. You can dispel this, even if you have re-raise and AP restore active. It's a dispellable buff. And so AoE res at 25, you also give yourself dispel haste. Uh, if you have one of those active, you also have a re-raise. You also give yourself 10% AP restore, just mentioned a couple minutes ago. He also has a on-hit effect of dispelling all buffs into spelling haste. So this is very similar to Lucio the Luminous, who activates his buff, kind of like Faris as well. They can remove buffs on hit. So Sephiroth comes with that as well. And he also gets 20% all element res. But again, all of these are roughly dispellable. And so in these mirror matchups of, of Sephiroth or, or Joom or Cloud, who's got that dispel, like... 80% of this is, is Garbo. <laughs> it doesn't end up coming to fruition. But regardless, the Dispel on hit is very, very powerful. The fact that he has re-raise is certainly nice. I, I meant to add this, and, and I had it. His passive ability is absolutely one that needs to be taken note of. This one is a four-time general damage barrier of 50% that he starts the battle with off automatically. So that's amazing for first and second hits in Guild Wars. It's also the 40 defense pen and slash res pen together on the same buff. And this is 40 AoE re resistance penetration. So this is actually new, like Cloud, the AoE res pen. So not only does he have the ability, as we'll see in a second, to dispel AoE wide, he also can penetrate AoE resistance. So this passive exceptionally exceptionally good now the rest of this i was just talking about this giant diamond aoe is a dispel courage but it's also a dispel of the wide aoe buff that we're seeing so rampantly as well it's 40 defense pen for those three turns it's also his heal back which is a major form of his survivability where you know that barrier is one portion of it but being able to do a, a ton of damage on these diamonds and just siphon back 50 percent of the damage done he's got 15 healing power up innately in his kit so that will amplify the damage absorbed on that 120 ability that guaranteed hit that i was talking about it's a much smaller square shape aoe that's also the 60 percent aoe crush and the limit break is another giant diamond that is a 20 percent all element res reduction but it is also the new curse status effect that allows you to uh, not heal at all for three turns and then if you have re-raise active and you die the re-raise will not allow itself to come to fruition it's not a re-raise removal but it's like a, a re-raise that just you, it won't happen so kind of odd but we'll see it in practice when he's released it so uh you know there's a lot of a lot of decent stuff here in terms of dispelling aoe damage but we'll get to the general thoughts i think he's an a minus but I'm not, I'm not confident in it. I'm not happy about it. And I'll, I'll talk through why. The survivability is somewhat exposed to me. That barrier on his passive sounds great, but there's no barrier protect anywhere in his kit. The re-raise on himself is great, but there's no re-raise seal anywhere in that kit either. So, you know, we're seeing how prevalently these barriers are. Because it's a general barrier, that means it can get broke by both physical barrier break and magical barrier break. So it's a little extra exposed. It's certainly nice as he approaches the battlefield that he'll take less damage. I do think it's very good, but uh, that whole like four time hit thing, I think is going to get exposed sometime in the future here. Uh, the main form of survivability though is the heal back damage. 
in my opinion, where that's what the 15 healing power is for, is to uh, amplify the amount of damage that he, he siphons back on that large diamond, which is a very good diamond because it dispels AoE wide resistance, and he's got AoE res penetration on that passive. So a lot of these diamond abilities were kind of like, eh, not bad, but, you know, the damage on them is, is decreasing over time. Not not for Sephiroth. He will do a lot of damage on that ability, so he will heal back a lot of that, which is certainly a nice thing, but I, I think he's mostly revolved around that, which obviously makes things difficult to if in a mirror matchup if he does get cursed and he can't heal himself that's a major form of of his uh, own survivability and he does have some great tools as i just went through for the diamond shaped abilities with the crush and the aoe wide removal i do think they made a big mistake though with his limit break range versus the main job range a critically bad blunder in my opinion this limit break range is six squares away very long quite honestly which is fine that's not inherently bad but the main diamond here is only five squares away which means it's very possible that you have a lone tank let's say that's by themselves and and sephiroth moves up a it means he can get baited at six squares away but it means he'll blow his limit break on that singular unit which to me is uh, tremendously bad, horrifically bad and exposed for people being able to manipulate and take advantage of. I think if these were the same ranges, Sephiroth would be ironclad in how good that limit break is in applying the curse, but as it stands right now, I'm actually not a big fan of that. I think they kind of bricked him because of it, so not a big fan of that. I do think he's a flash in the pan, though. Like many of these units, I think all of the seven Advent Children uh, characters are going to get power creep very soon, which sounds crazy considering how fast it is, but it's not that they're going to get power creep. That may not be the right word, but I don't see anything in them that tells me that they ha they can go the distance from a longevity perspective. And I wanted to talk more about that concept. Uh, number one, before I really conclusively say this, we do need to see the Katana Vision card that's going to come out for Sephiroth. This will solidify anything I have to say here because that could bridge a very important gap between Katana and another very powerful class that all of a sudden Sephiroth and Kadaj might look totally different. That happens relatively frequently, so that's a key asterisk. But the other thing is, I think these units look good because of power creep, but I think their pins are ready to get knocked down by the next few units. I do think King Mont and Joom are the S tier, and I don't think any of these Advent Children units are anywhere near remotely as close as them. I think they're very good right now in the short term because, relatively speaking, there are only a handful of units in the fourth anniversary that have this level of power creep and like buff creep and dispel creep, but I think I see holes in their kits. Uh, and maybe not holes, but I see counterplay in their kits. And you normally don't get these meta-defining units that have lots of counterplay. That's that's not a trend. And so the, the key things that I'm not seeing as well from a checkbox perspective, number one, I'm seeing no roll compression whatsoever in any of these four units in terms of uh, do they overlap in terms of they're a damage dealer, but they can also heal. Or are they a damage dealer, but they can also do great support. Are they a damage dealer and they can maybe generate hate some way or be a pseudo tank of sorts? I see none of that here, which is a major red flag because DPS is get power crept the fastest in this game. The second thing, there's noticeably really no auras or sequence abilities anywhere with them. And that was a trend for a very long time with a lot of the value of the characters that Gumi was able to add in these X factors to them where they had these tangible X's and O's uh, auras, which last very well quite frankly in the game there's lots of characters with ores that still do great lots of characters with sequences that do very very well so them not having any of that is kind of red flag and they are all very buffer reliant quite frankly in a dispel oriented meta i don't i don't look at any of these units as particularly impressive with these massive paragraphs of the buffs when you can dispel 80 percent of the buffs on on a wide array of abilities and it is rampantly everywhere i mean just to recap off the top of my head you know lucio can do it on hit sephiroth can do it on hit Oldoa, Ice Oldoa has it on her limit break. Joom has it on her select two. Uh, Shadow Lynx, the bow unit, which if we're going into a missile meta ever, she's going to be one of the premier units. She's got it prevalently as well. I Cloud, If I didn't say it, Cloud also has it on his AoE. Let me just pull up the units here. Uh, Veritas of the Heavens has it on one of his main AoEs. So there's so much dispel everywhere that I'm really not looking at any of these buffs as very particularly powerful. Right now, maybe, but... I don't, I don't believe in it. And so that's the, the preliminary character thoughts. I'm, I'm really uh, trying to be smart about how I analyze these units and not live in the moment, be a prisoner of the moment, because my gut tells me that there's a... I see key recurring trends here. Sephiroth's got no barrier break at all anywhere in his kit either, which may not matter if you if you pair him with Kadaj, who does have a barrier break, but there's so many incomplete parts to their kits that aren't very self-sufficient that 
I don't see them in it for the long haul. And I don't see any of these units as like really like meta driving units. They might be pieces, but that's my early preliminary thought. We'll see if I'm wrong, but that's kind of my, my prediction for the moment. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you all later.